I'm a professor of solar energy from IIT Bombay. And I'm going to share with you my journey where now I'm spreading sustainable energy solution all over the world. I come from a small village. And the image that you see is an image of a school where I used to study. It's a small one classroom school. And we all used to sit in the one same classroom. So there'll be half a line for standard one, another half for standard two, and three and four and five. And we were taught by one single teacher. But I was lucky enough to get out, go to the city, and get admission in engineering. Remember, this was long, long ago. And something interesting happened when I was in third year of my engineering. So there was a motivational talk, and the speaker came and told us that as an engineer, you should be creating jobs rather than taking jobs. And I was really inspired by that idea and decided to do something for my village and community. Well, I continued my, with my studies, but the whole idea that I want to do something for the community remained inside. I got an opportunity to do PhD in solar energy. My guide suggested that if you really want to work for society, why don't you work for solar energy? And solar energy can actually be helpful for the society. So, and unfortunately, I got admission in Europe for my PhD, but there was another worry I was carrying when I went there abroad. What if I do not come back? You know, going abroad, living in US and Europe, it is such a comfortable life. You know, you can very easily settle there. So I said, let me do something about it. I said, let me count on the number of days that I should go back. And I approximately, you know, I pro estimated out four to five years. And I, should, I thought, what should be that date? I thought the date should be a date of my birth, 21st May. And then I started counting my days to go back. And every single day, I will strike the date in the diary and count for the, how many days are remaining. And when you really want to do something, you know the whole universe conspires for you to, that to happen. And you would not be surprised to know that I actually finished my PhD in May. And I took a flight on the 20th evening from Brussels. And I landed exactly 21st May in India and joined IIT Bombay. So after joining IIT Bombay in 2004, of course, as a professor, I set up my research labs. I started teaching, I started publishing, and also written several books on the solar photovoltaic technology. But I, I figured out that something is amiss. This is exactly not what I wanted to. I want to do something more for the society. And that is where the birth of a soul took place. Soul is nothing but a solar urja lamp program. Urja means energy. What happened in around 2010 when he realized that the government would spend billions of dollars in subsidizing kerosene. And the main application of kerosene is for the lighting purpose. And having background in solar energy, I thought, why not every kerosene lamp be replaced by solar lamp? What is so big deal? And when, if, when we looked around, there are many programs which were, which were running, but not very successful. That triggered me to take a sabbatical leave from IIT Bombay in 2012. I went to villages, spent a lot of time figuring out where is the issue, what is the problem. And I figured out three problems. First, the affordability. Second, the repairability. And the third, availability. And in my wisdom at that time, I thought the best solution is to involve local community in doing every operation of a solar lamp, whether it is assembling of a lamp, selling of a lamp, repair of the lamp, maintenance, everything can be done by community locally. After all, it is not a rocket science. It's a simple technology. When you put component together, you can do that. So we started with a solar lamp program with a small community. And surprisingly, in four months, we could actually provide 21,000 lamps made by communities and supplied to the rural areas. Well, I thought that is not enough. We need to do more. We need to do a work which is applicable to the entire country and the world. So then next target that I decided was, why don't we provide solar lamp to 1 million students in one year time? And again, 
it worked out very well. I actually figured out a way to work with the government, with the society, and with the student. We set up a complete infrastructure. And uh, mind you, that that 1 million target was just achieved in 11 months' time. And we reached to more than 10,000 villages with this. <laughs> Will that be good enough to reach out to the country? Probably yes. And again, we, 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 we put to the government that, look, this is the way to solve the problem of solar energy. And not only that, today we are running a program where we are reaching to millions of students. And as I'm talking today, we have reached to 5.8 million students. And 5.8 million students means 5.8 million families. And when the solar lamp goes at home and family, we figured out that only sometime it is used for study. Other than study, the lamp is used for anything and everything. The mother will use in kitchen, the father will will use in milking cows, going to the field, toilet, Ramayana part, Gita part, what not. You know, from the birth of a baby to the funeral, every single operation, the lamp is used, which you see here. But the other interesting part was the involvement of the local community. We have about 9,000 women working on this project. And they come from UP, Bihar, Assam, Jharkhand, Odisha, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Nagaland, many parts of the country. Well, the whole idea was that they should be able to repair locally, so we also helped them to establish Souls Repair Center. And many times I tell, tell it jokingly that in this modern world, there are many souls which are in trouble. And all our repair centers, with the touch of humanity, can actually help the troubled souls as well. Well, this is the only solar lamp, but we knew that solar lamp is not alone going to solve the problem. We need to do something more. What about providing higher order needs of electricity? The fan, the light, the TV, etc. Then we have the same community to train further and start solar marts, or we call them smart shops. And they're run by smart people and smart solar didis. And there are about 140 shops right now running in the various parts of the country. The next problem is, if the women keep buying material from outside, the money from the local economy flows out of the economy. And if money flows out of the economy, the local economy will not become stronger. So then I started thinking, why don't we manufacture locally? Manufacture locally? What you can manufacture? Can you manufacture panels? Can you manufacture circuits, body parts, luminaries? I, I, I thought, yeah, let, let us try. Why not? Then we help the community, particularly in Rajasthan, to establish first of its kind in the world, a PV module manufacturing plant, which is 2 megawatt capacity. And it started like that. When I interacted this community about four years back, on your left you'll see that the women were in actually Gungat. When I first time, whenever a stranger come across them or the in-laws place, they will not show their face. In fact, even the sunlight will not fa fall on their face. Today, not only they are the 100% owner of the factory, but with their work, they are bringing the lights to the life of many, many people in their uh, place. <laughs> and they actually do every single operation. They actually uh, do the cell cutting, taping, stringing, uh, fabrication layoff, and everything. And people ask me, do you believe that these women are going to do the quality work? And I say that if a woman can make a very round, round, good chapatis, fulkas, I think she can do anything in the world. And that is what people are doing it here. <clears throat> well, well, this is only one manufacturing plant, but we need to reach out to many, many plants. And today, when there is a problem of a kind in the world, when today the climate is changing, I, I would say the climate has changed, and it has changed to a very serious level. Not only serious, it is becoming scary. Then in this case, what do we need to do is to find an energy solution which is applicable anywhere in the world. This also is the year of Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. And Mahatma Gandhi always emphasized on the production by masses, not the mass production. And when we do the production by masses, communities get involved and they work together to get the self-sufficiency and self-reliant. And I've been thinking, why don't we apply this concept to energy? Why can't communities, individuals, societies, villages 
generate and fulfill their own energy needs. Buy locals for local. Why don't we democratize energy? Buy locals for locals. And answer is yes, we can do that. And I call it energy Suraj, the localized energy self-sufficiency. And we are, we are now promoting this idea to the entire world. But when we, how do we bring this idea of energy Suraj to the entire world? And I thought, why don't we involve future for the future? Future meaning the student, the young population. Because when the climate will change, those who are in 40s and 50s are not going to be on this world. But the child who is 10 years old, 15 years old, is going to live here 70, 80 years. Why don't we involve every single child and make them what I call student solar ambassador? An ambassador means not only giving them theoretical knowledge, but giving them hands-on training so that when they acquire their skill and they talk to people and they when grow up, they are going to use the solar energy. So what we did on the last 2nd October, on the birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, we trained many students to assemble their own lamp on a single day. And we also got a Guinness World Record for the same. I am going to play a small video for you. Please watch. Very powerful, isn't it? Let us make it a global movement. And that is what I'm trying to do. Right now when I'm talking to you, I'm on my Gandhi Global Solar Yatra. Actually, I'm going around the world to talk to people and tell them that, look, solar energy has evolved enough, it is, the cost is reduced enough, that it is now feasible and viable, that all of us can generate all of our energy needs and bring energy Swaraj. And we are going to do on the 2nd October 2019, which is 150th birth anniversary, we are going to train more than a million students all over the world for making their own solar lamp. Not only that, because this is also 150th uh, anniversary and world is going to celebrate as an international non-violence day, all the students, all the solar ambassadors are also going to take a pledge of non-violence to environment. But before even we do that, I believe that even if it is solar energy, the entire approach for sustainability has to be changed. The first principle of sustainability has to be a discipline, a discipline in consumption. Even if it comes to solar energy or any form of energy, the discipline of consumption is first required. And to bring that point forward, I have made a principle, I call it AMG. A stands for avoid use of energy. As much as you can, the first and the best thing you can do this in the world is avoid use of energy. It does not mean that you have to live in dark, but you have to use solar energy in a passive way, in a smarter way. Well, and if you cannot avoid it beyond certain point, then you can minimize it. How can you minimize it? By using very efficient devices. LED, for example, is very efficient. It requires one-tenth of 
power as compared to the other devices and therefore one tenth of energy and therefore all your energy needs goes down. So minimize your energy needs. And if not, final and the last option should be generate electricity with using the solar. So you need to follow this principle of AMG. And if you're not going to follow, you will say OMG. Oh my God, solar is expensive. Oh my God, I can do this. Oh my God, I can run my house on this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one senior scientist, renowned scientist in India told me that at the time of Gandhiji, the charkha was a change, symbol of change. And in the today's modern world, the solar lamp which you are spreading to the entire world could be the symbol of change. And as somebody pointed me to me, that actually solar is in my name Solanki, and how I could have done things different than this. Thank you very much. <laughs>